Exporting to social media websites often forces you to crop your photos, but what if you could instead just expand your images a bit to keep everything? WebSharp Pro version 5.8 now lets you do that by using Photoshop's new Generative Fill AI to export in any aspect ratio. This first image is a great example of a problem I see quite a bit in Instagram, which is simply that it's too tall. Most of our cameras shoot at about a two by three aspect ratio, but Instagram is limited to a four by five vertical. So when you export for Instagram with WebSharp Pro, it knows this and it's gonna force cropping to the image. And you can see here the top looks okay by default, but the bottom is starting to cut off this wave and I don't like how that looks. I can of course click and drag my crop and maybe choose a compromise like this where top's still okay and I've got more of the wave down below, but it doesn't really showcase my artistic vision. I really wanna show the full height of this wave and I can't do that without causing problems to this tree. So what I really need is more content on the sides so I can expand the overall crop and keep everything I love about the image and yet still make Instagram happy. So I'm gonna hit escape to cancel my export and instead using WebSharp Pro version 5.8, we can go into settings, go to quick export and under crop fill is this new option. We can go down to keep full image, fill via generative fill. When you choose this, what you're telling the panel is that if I export an image with an aspect ratio, which is not a perfect match for my exported image, then rather than cropping off the top of the image, whatever it needs to do, it is now given permission to expand on the top or expand on the side in order to hit this target aspect ratio and keep as much of the image as you'd like. And I also wanna choose how it gets filled. So if I wanna to choose to have a little bit more filling on the right or the left or wherever, I can do that via interactive crop and filling. So this is an option I would generally turn on here unless you're doing a batch export and you just wanna let it fill by default. Let's go ahead and click sharpen. And we'll see here we're prompted to crop the image, but this time, instead of trying to chop off the top and the bottom of the image, it's now trying to expand the image. And what you should envision here is when we finish with this crop, anything that's blank is gonna be filled in with generative fill. So it's gonna add more water and more sky to the image anywhere there's a blank. And we can go and do something like an off-center fill. So we'd have a little bit more filling on the right than the left, or even like a three-sided fill if we want. So there's a lot of control over this process. And what I want to do here is keep as much of the original content as possible while at the same time minimizing how much I'm filling. I don't want to showcase AI's filling. I really want to showcase my image. And so to do that, I'm going to go and minimize the filling. Something like this is going to keep all the parts of the image that I love and sort of minimize how much it needs to fill in these areas. And I think a symmetrical filling ought to look fine here. So I can hit return and go click the check to proceed. And now WebSharp Pro is using generative fill to create this extra content. In a moment, we'll have some choices and we can pick from a few different options. So we've got fill variant one as our default. And I think that looks great. If I look at fill variant two, I'm gonna just hide this out of the way here. I think that also looks fine. And the third one, uh, I don't like as much. It's a little bit off on the edges here. And so these are all pretty equally good to me. If you look super closely, there's some minor discrepancies here. The tool I'm sure will keep getting better, but there's nothing here I would notice or have a problem cloning out if this was my final export, but it's not. We're still viewing a higher resolution than the final export. So this is gonna look great in the finished version of the image. And if you're always happy with the results here, you can always choose this option to just use the default fill variant one and not be prompted to make the choice. But I like having the option to find the best one whenever I do use fill. So let's use this variant and that's gonna complete the export and I've selected to have it left open. So we're looking at the exported image here where we could refine the sharpening, but you can see the overall result looks really clean, looks great. And just compared to the original, you can see it's very consistent with the original and yet it got a little bit wider to make Instagram happy for its four by five vertical needs. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's take a look at another example. And in the second image, this is one where I'm thinking I'd like to export this to be the header of a group I manage on Facebook. So I've got this Facebook group cover image template, and this is not something that comes with WebSharp Pro. This is one that I've created for myself. If you ever wanna create more templates like this, just go to settings, go to quick export, and under edit size here, you can go create a new preset, set the sizes you want, move it up and down the list. And I've got a bunch of these you see are marked as hidden, so I don't have to look at them in my list. I just have the options that I use on a regular basis up in this dropdown here. So with this Facebook group cover image, I've got the dimensions I need loaded and it's gonna be much wider than my original. So when I click sharpen, it's gonna prompt me to fill that in. And I can command minus to kind of zoom back a little bit. 
and you can see there's quite a bit of extra content that needs to be filled in here. If I wasn't using this option to fill with the AI, then I'd be looking at a crop that looks more like this. You can see just how much image we're going to lose and how compromised that looks. So it's much nicer with the ability to fill in the image here. And I think I'm going to do something like this, maybe just lose a little bit of the top of the sky I don't need and maybe move it kind of off center. So it feels like it's kind of moving left to right in this image, kind of create this openness in the sky and bring this bird a little bit more to a point of interest in the image. And now I can just hit return to go ahead and start the filling process. And again, I've got my choices here. So one looks okay. Two is looking a little bit dark on the edges. I could adjust that afterward if I wanted. Uh, and three is maybe a little bit plain. I'm going to go with fill variant one. Go ahead and use that variant, let it fill in that way and complete that export. I'd probably make some little adjustments here. I think the blue it's added in is a bit more than I need. So I could go and maybe add like a little bit of an HSL adjustment, go to my blues and bring down the saturation a bit here, maybe expand in the cyans. Just taking that down a little bit, I think helps even out the image a bit more in the corners the way I like it. And when I'm happy with my export, just go ahead and click save, saves it to disk. And you can see here now we've got both versions of the image we've exported using our generative fill to fill in those sides and create an image that looks great for a header of a group on Facebook or for Instagram or whatever your needs may be. Now to learn more about WebSharp Pro, click on this next video.